This is Michael Orl of MobileBurn.com, and today I have with me the Samsung SCH i920, the Omnia 2 for Verizon Wireless. This is a Windows Mobile 6.5 device that features Samsung's TouchWiz 2.0 user interface. Let's open up the box and see what we have inside. Here's the Omnia 2 itself. Pull this out. See a very large display. Very cool back texture. It's um, something like the Samsung Jet feature phone. And you can see the 5 megapixel autofocus camera and the LED flash on the back right there. Really cool shape, and we'll take a closer look at that later. Let's set it aside and see what else comes in the box. Looks like we've got a CD or two. Companion CD for the Omnia 2. User manual. And VCast music with Rhapsody. User guides, warranty information, and tips and hints in this bag right here. This is a 3.5 millimeter stereo headphone adapter. You see it has the 3.5 millimeter adapter jack right here, and then the plug right here, but it's set up for calls. There's a microphone built into this uh, little device right here, and you can answer calls by pressing the button. Also a little tie clip or a pocket clip. We also have a micro USB cable in the box, and that plugs into the wall charger. This is a real trend I've been seeing lately is um, you know, wall chargers and USB cables being combined into one. That appears to be everything. No stereo headphones, no, anything, no memory cards or anything like that in there. So let's take a look at the device itself. I'm going to power the device up while we take a look at it. You can see it's got a really large 3.7 inch uh, display. It's an active matrix organic LED display, AMOLED display, which means it has really bright and vivid colors, uh, great color saturation. It's also wide VGA resolution, so there's an awful lot of pixels there to, to use for movies and web browsing, things like that. On the left-hand edge of the device, we have the 3.5mm headphone jack. It's in kind of an awkward place. You know, if you have it in your pocket, the jack sticking out of the side of the device is a little bit awkward. Volume control, a uh, little indicator showing that we have a micro SD card slot um, underneath the rear cover. Uh, there's 8 gig of storage built into the device, though. And then there's also an OK button here, used for the Windows Mobile OS. On the right-hand edge, up top first, we have uh, the stylus. It's um, largely optional for a lot of the tasks on the device. It telescopes, it's quite nice. has a good feel to it. Micro USB port for um, USB connectivity as well as charging. Lock button and the camera button for the camera and the video camcorder. The camera itself is located on the back. Let's see if I can pull this protective cover off. You see that really cool pattern on it. It's uh, very deep too. It's a um, colored pattern underneath a clear plastic, thick plastic layer, so it's really kind of slick. Um, 5 megapixel autofocus camera with the flash right up here on top. Speaker grills. Nothing too much to see at the top of the device. Not too much at the bottom either. This little pry point here is for taking off the rear cover. Let's see if I can do that here. You can see a nice large battery, and you can see what I was talking about, um, how the pattern has depth to it. It's not just painted on there. There is a physical depth to that pattern. Take a look around. There's the micro SD memory card slot that was uh, referenced on the outside of the cover. And we'll put this back on and take a look at the OS itself. There are a couple of ways to activate the device when it's locked. You can press, say, the power button or something, and then touch the unlock control, but you can also just hold down on the lock button itself for a second or two and it'll automatically unlock in one motion. This is the Samsung TouchWiz home screen. Right now it's a blank slate. We've got three different home screens we can work with. Just drag a widget out. Move to the next screen, 
drag a different widget out, maybe the Bing search client. You can move around the widgets just by long pressing on them with the fingertip or the stylus and repositioning them. You can also remove a widget entirely just by dragging it back to the widget tray. And while we're here, take a look at the quality of the image on this display. It's really, really bright, very high resolution, good color saturation. It's not as nice a selection of preloaded home screens as we see on most AMOLED display equipped Samsung devices. So it's not showing it off quite as well, but trust me, it's really, really bright. One of the things that Samsung has really been pushing on their devices of late is this 3D cube menu. Um, not really a fan whatsoever because I don't really think it serves any purpose. While it's visually appealing, I guess, to flip a cube around to some extent, um, after you've done that for 15 seconds, you really just want to get things done. And these menu icons down at the bottom are a much faster way of doing it. But just to be a good sport, I'll use the cube as intended and then load up, say, um, our images here. Nice how you can flip through them. It's really a quite attractive view. Flipping through all your different images. Same thing works for uh, videos and even for games. Move back and forth between the games. Um, I'll pull up this dice one because I always find this amusing. It uses the built-in accelerometer and basically it's just a pair of dice. But it's really kind of funny. And you know, I know my um, young son enjoys it a lot. Back button in the upper right hand corner. But again, like I said, you can skip to things just by tapping on them in the menu down at the bottom. It appears that Samsung has put in quite a bit of customization to Windows Mobile 6.5 here. This is not the stock Windows Mobile main menu. Um, that's actually a good thing because I, I find it quite difficult to use. Although I'm not sure that a multi-pane version like this is any better. Um, it's kind of um, reminiscent of the iPhone's layout. You can reorganize, reorganize the uh, menus as you like, remove items, add items. Uh, the frame rate on the animation is not particularly good and sometimes it's not quite clear whether you're going left or right just from looking at it. It's just a, a little bit choppy. It could use a, a little bit more smoothness. pop into the settings, you can see that's also been re totally redone. Um, pretty well organized. Uh, I'm actually liking the menu system overall compared to the stock Windows Mobile system. Everything works pretty well. Um, use that OK button that I pointed out before to get back to the prior screen. It's a little hard from the position I'm holding it now, but wireless manager for quickly turning on and off you know, the phone, Bluetooth, um, Wi-Fi, all that kind of stuff. It's a, of course, it's an EVDO 3G device. It's on Verizon's network. And here's some advanced system settings as well. Overall, it looks quite complete compared to the stock Windows Mobile menu. Another thing that's been customized this is the contact list. Looks very much like what we see on other. Samsung phones, both feature phones and smartphones lately. Um, Behold 2, uh, an Android power smartphone for T-Mobile, has a somewhat similar looking contact application and a lot of the feature phones like the Samsung Jet also have very similar looking things. Let's pull back in here and just tap on one so you can see it. Last thing I want to show you before I get down to the nitty-gritty of the device is the new virtual keyboard. This is, uses um, technology called swipe and instead of just tapping on the letters you actually draw across the screen. So I'll try to show you how it works. It's a little awkward from this hand, this position behind the camera, but T-H-I-S is a test M E S S A G E message using swipe. 
I misspelled it. You can, of course, just tap on letters as well. Trick will be to see how well it works with a thumb. My name is Michael. Now this was done with out reading any instructions, uh, tutorials, tips, or anything. So all I knew from the system was that you drew on it. So it seems to work pretty well for me. I'm assuming there's going to be some sort of settings for automatically putting spaces after things um, when you enter a word and stuff like that, but overall it seems pretty good for uh, something a little bit different. So that's a brief unboxing and first look at the device. We'll come back with another part of this video and go over things like Opera Browser, how the calendar works, um, visual voicemail, and some other features like that. So this is the Samsung SCHI 920, the Omnia 2 for Verizon Wireless, and once again I'm Michael Oral for MobileBurn.com.